Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another session of Canvas Live. Canvas Live sessions are presented by the Canvas community members or instructor employees to help Canvas users improve and enhance their teaching and learning with Canvas. Today is part three in our series of medical school and Canvas. Today we're gonna to be talking about the clinical years, learning communities, collaborations, and being on the go, and how Canvas helps support those needs. Um, as you know that when you are in medical schools, they embrace learning communities wherein cohorts work together with mentors across all four years of training. Collaborations, lab work, or assignments can present challenges when you're not when you're in rotation and on the go. So in this session, our panelists will share their experiences in facilitating and delivering assignments, group works, and other course requirements during the, um, the clinical years. So our panelists today, we have Kathy Woltz from Joliet Junior College. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. And we have Matt Cook, who's from Will Cornell Medical College. Welcome back, Matt. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Kathy, and she'll go ahead and get started and talk about uh, her experiences in Canvas. Kathy? Thank you. Um, if you want to go to my first slide. I am a professor of nursing, so a little bit different take on this. Um, I'm not the technology person or instructional design. Um, we at this community college, if you're interested in technology and um, you're, you want to kind of use your creative side, we are allowed, given the latitude, to create a lot of our own things. And we've been using Canvas, I believe, for about five years. So, um, and every year we use it more and more. So um, I'll tell you some of the ways we do it, but um, really you could probably spend five hours just talking about all the ways our, just our nursing department uses Canvas and that's not, everybody else uses it too. Um, so we are a community college located in Joliet, Illinois. We serve a non-traditional nursing student population. The average age of our nursing students are about 33 years old. Uh, most of them are female. We do have an increasing male presence. Um, every semester we get a few more and we are increasing uh, minorities. So um, our, our, patient, our um, population profile is a little bit different than what we see in the universities in our area. Um, many of our students are single parents, they're second career changers, first generation students, minorities. So the needs of our students may be different than what you would see in a traditional university or in a different, uh, maybe a rural setting or a inner city setting or et cetera. Um, we use a lot of our senior level students to mentor our other students in both theory and clinical lab. So next slide, please. Um, so our challenges or our needs are, one is to encourage peer-to-peer -peer learning. Um, we typically have students who have taken one class at a time, who come up through the ranks, and by the time they get to the nursing, um, the nursing program, they're not used to all of a sudden taking 12, 15 hours worth of credit, trying to learn how to balance. And really, they just want to come to class and have you tell them what they need to know for the test and so they can be successful. So we have a lot of challenges with making our students be accountable and responsible for their own education and their own learning. And that's different for a lot of our students. They have come up through a system that didn't do that. So um, it reflects poorly sometimes on our evaluations, but we're moving through it. Um, we want to strengthen the bonds with our collaborative practice partners. As all of you know, if you have any clinical partnerships, 90% of your time on those units is, is spent nurturing and growing those relationships. We are all fighting for clinical spots and clinical spaces. So um, anything we can do to help those institutions kind of as a compromise, give, give relationships, we are really strengthening and working with, and we use Canvas for that. And then also we're, again, group projects. Um, students don't like them. They don't like only getting one grade. Um, they feel that it's unfair um, because there's always that one person that doesn't do anything. But again, um, it's, you know, the literature, the evidence that all supports group learning and that skill set 
for when they go out into the real world. And a lot of the issues that our students face are adopting skill sets that will move them into the real world. And they don't see those things all the time as much as they see, but I wanna know what, how to care for a dialysis patient. So that's, that's fine, but you also have to know how to work with the team that's caring for the dialysis patient. So again, some of those things are our challenges. Um, next slide, please. So a couple of things that we do is that we have our students do um, group projects. And we um, do it all through Canvas. So we actually divide our students into groups. Our students have a theory section group, and then they have a clinical cohort. So in this um, specific example, our students are given in, within their clinical cohort, they have got to um, pick a evidence-based practice problem to do a group presentation on. So they're given all the information through Canvas. It's easy for us to organize and disseminate the information through Canvas itself than it is to try and communicate with the students um, individually or in a lecture class type area. So through this cohort, the students are actually assigned and all the um, steps or the instructions for completion of this project. Um, so again, this is a group project that they get together, they identify a project, I, we actually also provide the rubric within um, Canvas. So they can be following the rubric as they're preparing to, for the presentation. And they also know this is what they're graded on. This is an example of a faculty rubric. And these rubrics are built into the um, actual course so that when they're on the screen that shows the, um, the actual project, they can also pick up the rubric there. They also get a peer-to-peer -peer rubric so that we're fostering not only faculty to um, faculty's evaluation of their presentation, but also peer-to-peer um, -peer presentation. And uh, interestingly, what we find is their peers are much harder graders than um, faculty are. So um, it's interesting, a lot of our students are very nervous. This is their first time doing a public speaking. Uh, we believe we've given them all the tools they need. We also allow them in Canvas if they want to upload a video um, or a, if they do a PowerPoint um, and again give them some other opportunities to upload things so that they can share those with their peers. They can share it with us. Usually they'll do that after their presentations. However, sometimes they'll do it before their presentation if they're concerned that maybe their presentation isn't going as smoothly or looks as good as they would like it to. Okay, next slide. Um, we also do things, um, again, because our students are in cohorts, when we organize their classes within um, Canvas, we do it by modules, and we do it by modules because our students like modules. 90% um, of our campus instructors, our faculty, both full-time and adjunct, use modules. So by the time the student gets to the nursing program, they've already taken a lot of electives um, at the college itself. So since the students are used to that, we try to stay within that. We feel it's just a real collaborative approach with the college. So even though we use modules under each module, then is a page and that page is for the week so the module may say week one when they open up these are all the things that they would do for the page and if you look at this when we're looking at this um, some of the things that they do is you'll see that they have a um, if you look at what we're going to do in class one of the things at the bottom it says concept map so um, if you'll go to the next slide we are fortunate enough here at JJC to have a collaborative classroom. It's a beautiful collaborative classroom with like um, eight or 10 different sections that the students can work collaborative on. And this is an example of the students doing it. They're able through Canvas to pull up the concept map, which you see right here, work on the concept map and work on it via the laptop as far as someone can type into it while the other ones are checking through books, iPads, phones, looking through their notes, trying to identify the information that's going to go in it. The beauty about doing it through Canvas is then it is saved in Canvas and everyone in that cohort can actually go in then and review the presentation. So if you have in this theory cohort, you have 24, 26 students, you may wind up having six separate groups in this collaborative classroom. 
each one of them is assigned a different problem. So let's say for this concept map, these students are working on a patient that has a seizure disorder. So they're actually then going to develop the assessment, the interventions, the evaluation, the teaching points, all of those things into this concept map, which then will be stored in Canvas so it can be shared with other students that are part of that cohort. Um, for later use and review prior to an exam, prior to, um, you know, clinical, prior to all of those things. Okay, next slide. And then um, another thing that I just started this semester, um, so um, I'm starting it in the fall, so I'm hoping it's going to work really well, is if you see in class, it also says share notes on a Google Doc. So what I did was I went in through Canvas and I created a Google Doc under each one of my, um, on my pages for each one of my modules or my weeks. So week one has a Google Doc, week two, et cetera. And what I want the students to do is all use the Google Doc for note sharing. I know there are um, a programs out there, I think it's called Study Blue or Blue Notes that allows you to do that. And I know a lot of medical schools use it. I also know that my son at the university, my son's at looking, preparing to um, go to medical school, taking his, pre, uh, his uh, finishing his pre-med, they told him not to use that because they feel that there's no oversight to it. How I'm planning on using these shared notes on the Google Doc is that the students will go in they will, whoever in class wants to write on the Google Doc, if they have questions, they can highlight those questions. Um, and then I'm going to review them um, after the class to see if I can help identify things. If there's a lot of questions, then maybe we'll bring them up in the next class and we'll go through those points and identify them. I also will look for some accuracy. So if there's an issue, but I also want the students to review it. And I want the students to actually answer their peers and it become very interactive. So I'm kind of excited about doing this. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to work. It comes from evidence from a different, from a big university who did it, but the student actually started it. And it was like Princeton or Yale or Harvard, where the student actually started the Google Doc in class and all the other students joined. We currently have about 50% to 75% of our students that either bring in a laptop or, an, or a tablet or sometimes even their phone and they take their um, notes um, electronically as you're doing lecture and group activities, et cetera. Um, we also use case studies. Um, we do a lot of case studies in our class so that we just recently, or not recently, but we break them up and we do case studies um, uh, on top of concept mapping again. So anything that can get the students to work together, do things collaboratively and use them through um, the uh, Canvas format. Um, we recently, I was just recently awarded a grant for $25,000 to um, purchase um, uh, virtual reality, um, augmented reality, um, artificial intelligence software. So we're pretty excited about that. We met yesterday, we we're going to go with ZSpace, so I don't know if everybody's familiar with that. Um, and we're looking at how to embed that into Canvas and also how to look at using that for, in our online teaching, because we all teach online at least something. I happen to teach pharmacology online. So we're all looking at how can we bring that in now to Canvas and start using some of this virtual reality, augmented reality. So I know many of you have probably been using it for years. We're excited. We're just starting it and we're looking at developing our own scenarios and stuff. So um, heads up if anybody has any great ideas or tips, um, we welcome those. So again, but it's using Canvas to um, do those. Um, next slide. Um, one of the other issues that we talked about a little bit earlier when we talked about collaborative practice, we talked about, I talked about our collaborative practice um, partners. And again, clinical space for us is a premium. We have three nursing schools all within our district, and we're all fighting for the same community hospitals. We have three community hospitals. We have three nursing programs. Um, we admit 98 students a year. The other two programs probably admit, or we admit 98 students every semester. The other two programs probably admit that much yearly. So you're talking at one time a semester, we can have 300 students vying for these same spots. And of course, everybody's overwhelmed. Um, 
everybody, you know, the nursing staff is overwhelmed. They're getting all these students. So we want to look at our collaborative practice, uh, practice partners as being more than just someone who's siphoning off clinical expertise and clinical space. We want to bring something to the table. And, and we do in the fact that we take patients and we do um, AM care and we give medications and we do assessments and those type of things. But really, it's still, being as a nurse on a unit, it's still an extra burden that the nurse bears, okay? It's, it's just the way it is. There's no way around that. And I'm sure it's the same for other disciplines like physical therapy and pharmacy. So one of the ideas I came up with was, uh, was looking at what the students can do. I teach at the last semester. These are senior level students. So they're going to go to the hospital and they're going to um, they're going to graduate in a couple months. So what can we do? So anyway, we started a readmission rate program. So what we did was we and again, we do this all through Canvas. It's really kind of cool. We actually called um, spoke to the case managers and said, hey, you're all recalling patients who have been discharged for some of the big things like COPD, heart failure, pneumonias, uh, renal dialysis, chronic renal failure, et cetera why can't the students do that? We can create a script. We can have the students record. We can have the students do the patient education um, and all those kind of things. And um, so far it has been really a cool, cool project. Um, if you can go to the next slide. We actually created a electronic health record. So, and again, accessed, um, the goal is for all of this stuff to be accessed through Canvas um, and, and thankfully to Canvas, they do have open source um, coding that you can use to make that, that API coding so that we can create that LTI and come in through Canvas. So we're currently working on that, but our students have a script. And basically they say, you know, um, we're calling about this and um, we're looking at blah, blah, blah. And they answer these questions. So kind of just a little snapshot for you. But um, we're trying to use Canvas more and more for a lot of these things. So we're not replicating or duplicating. Um, we're, you know, exclusive like for the calendar, which is amazing when you're um, coordinating two or three uh, programs at the same time. Uh, one of our um, instructional designers here just created a syllabus that is closed caption so that we can just populate the syllabus with our information and it automatically closed captions the, the, ter the, the uh, form itself. So we're using that. Um, so again, a lot of cool things. Um, she just explained to me reminders. I don't know if you use those, but um, we just are, we have a lot of issues where we have an assignment like in an online class, a discussion question that would be due on Thursday, but the response by the um, peers isn't due till Monday. So when you look at the calendar, it looks like the assignment is due Monday and not Thursday. So we recently now have created these reminders to um, assist with that. So again, lots of cool uses. I'm sure you have many more than I do of collaborative um, learning environments that you can create um, within Canvas itself. And that was my part. Thank you so much, Kathy. Matt? Hi, yeah. Um, so ours is a little bit different. You can go to the, um, ours is less about um, the clinical years, and, and it's more about the actual student community for this uh, this talk. Um, we have uh, over 400 students at a time across four different years, and they all need different types of information at different times, um, including like uh, advocacy, like student advocacy, um, research and academic academic opportunities, financial aid, and student life. Um, they just have a lot of questions about this stuff. And we had a site for a while, but as we've developed the, the culture here, um, we've gotten students used to going to Canvas for everything, and that being the reliable source of information. So we decided to build a uh, course in Canvas that would house all this information. Um, so you can, so this is, they basically needed a lot of this information. This is just some of the information they needed. Um, and they also wanted a way to be able to manage a lot of the different student groups, um, like what updates for them, different events. Because what we were seeing is we had a list also for that, and the list was basically being ignored by most of the student body because it's just, it's, it's so much. Like, they would just get so many updates. And after a while, it just turns into noise, and you, you don't read it. Um, so we 
decided to make it uh, more of like an on-demand thing where when they need it, they can come find it. Um, the problem with that was that the, the time for the staff and the admins um, was limited. <laughs> so um, we were able to combine efforts with a lot of some students um, and a small handful of different uh, faculty and staff to build this site together, and I helped. Uh, so you can you can go to the next slide. Um, yeah, so this is what I said. Uh, we we basically had a team of mostly students and a few other admins um, build this Canvas course, and it became a a good solid repository for the student body. Um, so a couple of the big things were just using announcements um, instead of just sending out emails because they kind of hang around a while in the Canvas uh, interface too. So even if they uh, skip the email, they're still going to see it in their course when they log in. And also the group specific calendars having uh, events that are relevant to each of the student interest groups. Um, so this is our homepage for the, uh, it's, it's split into two columns because it's kind of long and I wanted to be able to make sure it was still kind of legible. So. Yeah, it's just divided up into um, policies and processes, which is like the biggest thing. Um, people need like a definite, uh, reliable source of information for, for policies. But this is basically like a one-stop shop for students to come in and find information about different topics that are the questions they have. One thing uh, that I want to talk about was the, um, the living local thing. So um, you can go to the next slide. This is just something that the students put together that just shows uh, it was like a bunch of different things that they found around this neighborhood to check out. And it's not something that I don't think any of this, the staff would have probably put together. <laughs> so it's kind of cool to see that collaboration um, happening with the students too and kind of serving themselves like what they want. Um, and so then I think the next slide is just uh, all the different groups. So this is just our 50 plus different student interest groups that all of these are a different group set in Canvas with like one group inside. But that way, students can be in more than one group. Um, so that was our solution for that. And yeah, that's, that's it. Great. Thank, Great. You, so Thank you so much. It's good to see good that, to we, see have that we have multiple um, um, different, different applications of Canvas uh, with, within this environment about the collaborative spaces that are student-led, the collaborative spaces that are created within that clinical uh, rotation. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's great. Thank you, both of you, uh, both Kathy and Matt, for sharing those insights. Uh, at this point, we will go ahead and turn it over uh, for questions. If anyone has any questions uh, for our panelists, they can post them in the chat. And as you're thinking about the questions, uh, we will also take any questions uh, after the session too. So if you have any follow-up discussions or thoughts that you wanna add to this conversation, you can always go back to the event page um, and feel free to post your questions there. Um, we can always continue that dialogue on how to leverage um, Canvas in order to build learning communities, collaborations, and especially you know, being on the go we just wanted, I just want to make another reminder that there are two other parts of the series that we did earlier uh, last week and the week before. We have um, a, a good presentation on uh, how Canvas is being used in the preclinical years in medical schools and nursing programs, as well as uh, during the clinical years, how they uh, facilitate communication and um, organize uh, content for the, the rotations and things like that as well. It doesn't look like there are any questions coming in at this point, which is totally fine. Um, one thing I just wanted to, to mention is uh, that we do have a Canvas Live page. Um, so if you go to live.canvaslms.com, you'll see a lot of different uh, sessions, events, webinars that come through that space. Um, we'll post some more information about the medical series where you can um, watch all three if you'd like. And if you are interested in presenting uh, things in Canvas Live and sharing your experiences and your school's solutions to different um, challenges, uh, we have a Canvas Live user group where we're doing a lot of the brainstorming in the back end there. Um, you can find other users to collaborate with uh, to deliver some sessions as well through Canvas Live. 
Uh, that said, I just wanted to say thank you to both of our panelists. I appreciate your being here. I know for you two, it was your second session. Um, Kathy was with us in the part one, and Matt was with us with part two. So this is great information. Thank you for being part of the series, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the week.